Welcome to the Gingium YouTube channel, where we are currently racing to finish Drift Truck V2. And now, a little over one week. In the last video, we made massive progress on the brake slash clutch and the drivetrain. In this video, we'll be 100% finishing the brake slash clutch and working on every other system. Starting the intake and exhaust system, welding all the bungs for the AN systems, reinstalling some of the wiring, and more, like painting the cage. So, without any further ado, let's jump into it. Now, obviously, you can't install an AN line straight onto something like this. So, the first thing we're going to do in this video is cut off all the old flanges and weld AN bungs onto everything. The radiator, the engine ports, and some of the reservoirs. Mishimoto, I love, I love working with Mishimoto aluminum because they use good aluminum. Shout out to them. No cheap stuff here. Now for the second radiator bung here, I had to cut out a little adapter on the plasma cutter because the hole coming off the radiator was much bigger. Now after the radiator was done being welded up, I went ahead and started working on the water box. The first thing to do on that was to weld not an AN bung onto it, but a normal bung onto it that will connect to the crossover tube coming off of the engine. Some aged water. Been sitting in here for what, probably three months? Oh! And with that done, I went ahead and added an AN bung that will connect to the rear mount radiator and began to pull off the thermostat housing so I could add an AN bung to that. For one, we're gonna weld AN bung onto the uh, thermostat housing, but we're also putting a cooler thermostat into the car. We're gonna hope that that works well with the rear mount radiator. Obviously with the rally Miata, we actually had to remove the, the thermostat entirely. There's so much water volume added when you do a rear mount radiator, but at least on the rally Miata, by the time the engine got hot, the thermostat was not warm enough and the engine would actually overheat before the thermostat got warm enough to open up. So, cold thermostat. Did you know that Mishimoto offers cold thermostats for pretty much every car in existence? Now you do. <laughs> So we got the water box installed and plumbed. Got the AN bung in that, AN bung on the thermostat housing. Cool the thermostat, all put back together. Now I'm gonna start welding the bungs on for all of the reservoirs. So this one's gonna be power steering, so it needs some 6AN bungs. This one's gonna be uh, intercooler, 10AN. Brakes, 3AN. Starting with the brakes. Look at these little guys. Isn't that cute? There we are. I'll weld it up, and so now this will go right here, and pretty much each one of those three ports will go to each one of the three master cylinders. And with us trying to get this truck done as fast as possible, I was kind of bouncing around doing this thing and that thing. So here I put the fuel tank in, and now I'm going to work on getting all the wiring in the interior and getting the dash back in. So I went to put the dash in and then I remembered, wait a second, before the dash goes in, before the windshield goes in, I have to paint at least the front of the roll cage because that won't be accessible once the dash and the windshield are in. Oh, the first of the final test fits. Oh no, this steering wheel is perfect, bro. Yeah, it's gonna be sick. I love 
love how low it sits. It's like perfect. I think uh, the only thing I might do is adjust the steering wheel to the right a little bit. It's a little interruption in the video for a shop improvement. I know we're, we're kind of rushed on the truck, but this is a small thing, but a major change that I've been meaning to do. So the welding table used to be right here. Problem with that is that when I'm working on either the welding table or the workbench, I, I literally have no room. Meanwhile, there was a big open space over here. So we rotated the welding table 90 degrees. Now I have a bunch of room all the way around. I've been meaning to do this for a while, but the catalyst which caused me to actually do it is this thing right here. A new flexi spot desk, chair, and monitor stand. Wanted a spot over here by the plasma table for me to do all my CAD designs and all the fabrication in one spot. And now we have it. It is a motorized standing desk. So I can be over here sitting, making a design, working the plasma table. If for some reason I want, I want to stand, all I have to do is push a button or manually change the height with the arrow keys. And now it's a standing desk for my perfect height. The desk is also incredibly sturdy. It's got a max static load of 440 pounds and it can, it can move some weight. But in addition to the desk, I now have a desk chair. Now I do have some nice shop chairs, but listen, there's a difference between shop chairs and desk chairs. The shop chairs are great when you're TIG welding, working on a car. They're not so great at giving you back support, but this thing, this ergonomic chair, from FlexiSpot, absolutely the most comfortable chair I've ever sat in. It's got adjustable lower back support, a nice headrest, adjustable armrests, height goes up and down, and it looks cool. You know, some desk chairs don't look like they would fit in a shop, but this one does, so that's cool. Now the goal is to eventually have a desktop here, one to replace my laptop, which is a little old and tired, but also just to have monitors, which would be nice. And that brings me to showing off FlexiSpot's monitor arm stand. Also the nicest arm stand I've ever seen. It's got an adjustable gas strut inside, so no matter what weight monitor you put on it, you can adjust it so it counteracts that weight perfectly. Now one of the really awesome things is that this desk has a 15 year warranty and a 30 day free return policy. So you can try it out without being worried. And you know what's awesome? FlexiSpot's Black Friday sale is beginning now. You guys can use my code Gingium to get an extra $30 off of this combination right here. If you're interested in any of that, I'll have a link in the description down below to FlexiSpot and up in the cards. Huge thank you to FlexiSpot for sending out the desk and sponsoring this video. I'm excited to have a new work spot in the shop. Shop improvements, I mean, what's better than that? But I've spent enough time redoing the shop, getting it better. We gotta get back to work on the truck. So right now I'm working on getting the pedal box like fully installed so I can start uh, working on the hard lines, the brake hard lines. So obviously there's three master cylinders, one for clutch, two for brakes, which means there's three feed lines and three outlines. Here are the two outlines for the brakes, they connect to those banjo bolts and then they go into the trans tunnel and that's where they just connect to the chassis. Well, here are the feed lines, three of them coming off of this reservoir. The only problem is that I did not buy them long enough. They don't reach all the way around. So I bought some new ones of those. Gotta love wasting, you know, a hundred bucks on lines that don't work, but one of them I can reuse for the clutch, so that's good. Then this is the other thing I've been working on, the throttle cable. So obviously the throttle is this pedal way on the right. Now the throttle bracket that comes with the pedal box, it offset the throttle linkage like three inches to the right of the, the, the gas pedal. Which of course, in our situation, this thing literally has zero room on left and right of it. So that didn't work, didn't fit. So here's the one that came with it. So all I did, for one, I notched the gas pedal so that this linkage could be flush with the pedal. And then I made a new little bracket that holds the lever that brings the lever closer to this master cylinder. And so now that all clears. And now I just have to put it together and build the cable. Wah, 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 wah. Testing the throttle cable. I think it works. <laughs> That's the throttle cable coming down through the firewall. It's mounted to the chassis right there. It's adjustable. Um, and then here's the linkage that connects it to the actual pedal. Actuates really smoothly. It's got a stopper. It's all, it's all really nice. Very close to the trans tunnel, as you can tell. And then we have all of our feed lines feeding the mass cylinders and our pressure lines going to the brake systems. And so it was time to start making the brake hard lines. It's one of my favorite things to do because it's like fabricating 
but it's easy because you can bend the tubes with your hands instead of having to have a big, expensive, heavy tool. So I got the entire uh, rear brake line finished. As you can see, it comes down the frame, tees off into one caliper there, goes across this part of the frame into the other caliper right there. I made a few mistakes, mainly that these two sets of uh, fittings look very similar and one is metric and one is standard. And I definitely messed that up. Thankfully, uh, the thread size is similar enough where I think it's gonna be fine. But if it leaks and I can't get enough clamping force, I'm gonna have to remake the entire line. So well, that kind of sucks. But with the rear done, we're gonna go ahead and uh, move on to the front. Same thing, it's gonna come off right here. Go to the front, T, each caliper. Now all the front ones are done. Coming up or over the steering rack to this beautiful T right here. One goes down along the subframe. I prefer this routing so much more than going up to the firewall because there's already stuff up there. It goes up to that brake over there. And this one goes up to there. Also went ahead and tightened all the fittings. So it should be good to go. For now, I think I'm gonna do some stuff in the engine bay. So in the engine bay, I got the third Mishimoto reservoir and you can't tell, but I did weld the two AN bungs on that. So that is for the inner core. Now, while I was doing that, Daniel went ahead and uh, covered up the uh, ugly old harness. So we're gonna put this in, cause this has to go in first. Then once that is in, we can mess with the rest of the wiring and start doing kind of the vacuum lines, all that kind of other finishing stuff on top of the engine. Well, it's seeming as if I'm gonna have to extend a few things, unfortunately. But also, where the fuck does this go? <laughs> and just like that, this engine went from looking kinda cool to not cool at all. <laughs> so we gotta turn that empty space into something with a nice little filter right about there. That's it for now. It was a very simple intake to make. Ooh, it's still freaking hot. I am going to put an dash eight bung for the catch can on the bottom and a, what, I think an eighth inch NPT bung for the air temperature sensor. But we'll do that later. So today I'm getting the remaining uh, soft lines to finish the pedal box install and actually bleed the brakes and the clutch. And so now would be a good opportunity to totally finish the pedal box install. And so I made a false floor. Obviously, since the mass cylinders are under where your feet are, if you don't have a false floor, A, you could possibly damage some of the lines. B, it's just super uncomfortable and un uneven. And so, you got one plate right there, and then another plate which will weld to that and bolt in. Dimple dies, grip tape, it's gonna look sick. I have to go ahead, resurface these things, put the dimple dies in, tack them together, and then we can put it into the truck. So here's the final piece. Six little dimple dies, a nice flat spot to put your feet, some bracing on the back, and some step-offs on the back to make it all nice and level. And this, just turned this truck from a boring old looking street truck to a freaking race truck. But it's still, still, still streetable. I bolted it down, hopped in there, felt it with my feet. Feels freaking awesome, nice and sturdy. So we're gonna paint the plate so that we can put some grip tape on it. And then I'm gonna drill the holes in the cab to build the back section too. We're getting close to a point where we have to wait for parts, which is a good thing. It means, it means I'm keeping up. But anyway, kind of put this right there and magically turn it black. Kind of like that. Once it dries, we can put the grip tape on it. And then once we bleed the brakes and make sure all that's working, 
we can put it in the truck. I got all the remaining lines and fittings. So we have everything plumbed up, including the clutch. Kind of looks a bit like spaghetti, but it should hopefully work. And so the first fluid going back into the truck, brake fluid. Right, let me lift it up, see where it's coming from. So I should just be able to tighten that more. Wouldn't doubt, crank it down. So I think I fixed the first leak, but in doing that, we discovered that I messed up and mixed up the inlet and the outlet on the master cylinders. So when you pump the brakes, it does this. Yeah. Spaghetti junction is definitely much worse now, but it should work now. So take two. Oh yeah, I mean, yeah, it's like, I would say it feels like there is pressure on the brakes. The important part is those, the wrong fittings worked. <laughs> Believe it or not, the only one that leaked was a metric fitting, so, which is good because we were able to crank down on it, but we won't know how the brakes actually feel until we drive it. I hope I got the master cylinder sizing right. It feels like I did, it's not too stiff, but it doesn't go to the floor. Now we gotta do the clutch, which actually already has some pressure, which is funny. Oh, it's pretty stiff. It feels nice though. It's in gear, clutches in, go try to spin the rear wheel. Moves, right? Yeah. A little difficult though, yeah. Okay, uh, try it again. It's because I was pushing the brakes, haha, <laughs> gotcha. <laughs> Gotcha. All right, let's talk about exhaust for a second. So I have three of these UJs and two resonators coming from Mishimoto. Huge thank you to Mishimoto for providing all of these materials. They make fantastic fabrication materials and things like V-bands and now resonators and mufflers for prices that are way cheaper than other brands like Vibrant, for instance, but just as good quality. Now, if you remember, we have a bit of a, well, a tight, clearance on both of these exhaust manifolds. Uh, so in the previous version of Drift Truck, we had just log manifolds, but obviously that's not great for horsepower. So I got these actual nice, you know, tubular manifolds. I'm thinking I can get just a 90 and a 90 to come around the steering shaft. Possible that we'll have to remove the steering shaft to do that though, so that sucks. And, and ever since we built the new floor for the pedal box, it's got even, got it even tighter in here. This side will be easy, just whack the firewall a little bit, cut this down, boom, boom, boom. But yes, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna start cutting some things, like I'm gonna turn this into a bunch of short parts of 90 so I can play around with it. Just like, uh, well, like this, I think, yeah, it should be. Good to start, you'll start big. It's like close to fitting, but not really fitting. <laughs> Got, we need some smaller pieces and some aggressive angles. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> it clears technically, <laughs> but uh, I mean, that's a proof of concept. I can get it a little bit more perfect without, you know, painter's tape and stuff, so. Cool, I'm gonna start tacking things together. Let's see if it's even possible to remove the header when it's when it's like that. Or really, I should say if it's possible to install it. So I had to remove it to uh, tack the things on. Not looking so good. Oh yeah, there we go. Okay, right. it's also just kind of a learning process, eh? I got it in, but the problem is I have to add quite a bit more to the manifold. Mostly just like a little bit down and a V-band. The V-band is gonna be the problem. V-bands are big-ish. Does that look tight? Cause it is. <laughs> well, that's the gap between the trans, which doesn't matter cause the trans and the exhaust move together. Uh, that's the gap between the frame right there. Um, the gap between the steering shaft, I can't even fit my finger in there. But it is in, it's removable. You have to remove the entire steering shaft to do it, but it is removable and when you steer, it still clears. So, boom, we did it. I can go ahead and pull this one off, weld it all the way up, uh, and then I can just finally install it. And then I do have to do this side as well.
So as you can probably tell, we got both the exhaust manifolds in here. We now can build one side coming off here, one side coming off there, X pipe right here. And then for now, it's just gonna be turned downs because I don't have time to do these fancy tips that I wanna do. But all of that is going to happen in the next video. Do you know what else is going to happen in the next video? The first start. But I don't, I don't wanna get ahead of myself. For now, I'm happy we finished the brake slash clutch system and made some massive progress on the rest of the systems. Thank you all so much for watching and I'll see you in the next drift truck video.